Welcome to the Invasive Species Action Network's fly tying series on invasive pests. Invasive species are a problem globally, both affecting our economies and ecosystems. If you would like to learn more about invasive pests, stick with us at the end of the video. Hello, this is Matt Wilhelm from Livingston, Montana, and I'm going to tie the murder hornet today. So let's talk about materials real quickly. We've got a size uh, two, four extra long hook here. It's a really big hook. Uh, we're going to use black thread for our purposes. Um, for the stinger, we're going to use, this will eventually become, I'm gonna strip this down to the stem, uh, a hackle stem for the stinger. We're going to use yellow and black foam for the body. We're going to use some black yarn for the, uh, the underbody of the pattern. And we're going to use some rubber bands for the legs. Um, uh, and then for the wings, we'll be using uh, some pieces of uh, brown hackle for the wings. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is um, put a thread base down the hook, which is usually the start of any fly. I'm gonna coat the thread with hook and, or coat the hook with thread, pardon me. Uh, this will take a little while because it's a really long hook, but this is a really big insect. So um, we're trying to match the size and the appearance the best that we can. I'm gonna get down to the curve of the hook and I'm going to tie the stinger on here right now. So to prepare this feather, I am just going to strip off, I'm going to strip off the, the feathers or the down off each side. And then the stinger part is more out on the tip where the stem narrows. So I'm going to keep stripping this down, keep stripping it down, get down here to the end a little bit more where it gets skinny. And I'll eventually cut that tip off. Uh, one neat thing in fly tying, a guy named Wayne Llewellyn told me, as far as thread materials, if you spin your bobbin counterclockwise before you add materials, it'll, it'll throw the thread right against your fingers. And that's nice. It just kind of lays it right against your fingers like that. So it goes right onto the hook nicely. So I'm just going to kind of wrap my thread forward here. A few wraps, tie that stem down, and then I'm going to cut this off and make it the appropriate length there so there's the stinger and I'll get rid of this part up here in front and my threads returned to the back of the hook the rear um, and now I'm going to add some strips of foam so I'm going to take yellow foam and then I've got the black foam down here and I'm going to cut very thin st strips of foam now there's two ways that you can do this. Some people will take the foam and they will glue it together. I am not going to do that. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. And I got to cut a strip of the black foam as well. Very thin. Now, if you were going to do this with the glue, to get these pieces, I cut two separate pieces, but to do this with the foam, to get these two skinny pieces, one thing you could do is, is you could take your whole sheets of foam and you could essentially glue them together and cut them in unison to get these pieces, but I do mine a little bit differently. So anyway, I'm going to add these pieces of foam now at the back of the hook and I'm going to lay on enough material to get me kind of almost to the middle because that's where I'm going to stop this material as I wind it forward later. So I'm going to go about to the middle, tie it in and I'll tie this down and put some more thread wraps over top of this foam bringing my thread back to the curve of the hook. Next material is going to be some black yarn and I'll take a section of this black yarn off of here. And I'm going to tie that in at the curve of the hook. This will be my underbody. Tie that in right there. And then I'll work my thread forward again over top of that yarn, about to the middle. 
Okay, then this will be my underbody. I'm gonna make some wraps now. When you tie this, these, these hornets have a pretty thick abdomen. And I'm going to, working with this yarn is a little bit tricky. I'm gonna to try to build this up and make it thicker. I'm gonna go forward a little bit and then I'm gonna go back a little bit and just try to thicken it up a little. And I'm gonna go forward and then back, kind of building up some bulk. Forward and back, making it thicker. It's looking pretty good. And right about to the halfway point. Then I'm gonna stop right there and I'll tie this off. So I've built up my underbody. Put a few wraps behind that to tie it off. Clip this off. And I got a little bit left there, I'll get rid of two. So now, so now I'm gonna take my black foam and I'm going to wind it forward and I'm going to palmer this kind of through the yarn, creating little spaces between each winding. There we go, tie that off. And then, what I'll do now with the yellow foam is I'm going to go in between those spaces that I created. So if, if you were to glue these together, they would come through in one, one fell swoop. But I've just found that this way is, is a good way to do it as well around one more last time try to get it right next to that black yarn right there and then tie that off so there's the abdomen of the of the insect <clears throat> all right all right next tie that down a little bit more i'm going to add a little bit more bulk right here um, just to kind of get it more even, I'm going to just add a little bit more black yarn and just bulk this up a little bit. It's a little bit more consistent. There we go. One thing about fly tying is you can, you can always add more. It's tough to subtract stuff, but you can always add more. All right, so now I need to create a wing case. And that's gonna be made out of the black foam once again. I'm gonna cut a strip of this black foam for the wing case. Whoop, on the floor. And what I do when I attach a, a bigger chunk of foam like this is that I always put a point on the foam. To lessen, to lessen the, uh, the bulk where I tie it in. All right, so I'm gonna tie that in right here by that point. All right, so there's my wing case tied in right there. Now I'm gonna wrap my thread back over top of this wing case just a little bit to, and what this does, if I fold my wing case forward, I'm gonna have a big gap right here, okay? It's gonna get like real skinny. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna wrap back over top of this wing case, just a hair onto that gap so I don't have such a pronounced uh, gap when I pull forward. All right, so now another piece of black yarn. I need, an, eventually I'm going to need another uh, underbody piece when I do the thorax. So I'm gonna tie in another piece of this black yarn. And I'm gonna tie forward toward the eye just to kind of capture the tip of that yarn. Makes my thorax 
diameter a little bit more consistent. All right, now rubber band legs. And what I've done here is, is these are medium size. You can also use large, but the medium works a little bit better for this. Um, uh, it's less bulk than the large rubber band legs. I suppose you could use small, but I don't, I think those would be a little bit too flimsy. And there's actually two rubber bands here and they're, they're still kind of glued together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rubber band and I'm just gonna make a half hitch um, right in the end. I'm just gonna loop that through and I'm gonna make a half hitch right there to create a joint, all right? All right, so we're gonna lay this one in. This, is, this, this insect's gonna have six legs, so this will take a little bit of time. I need to give my bobbin that counterclockwise spin real quick. And one of the challenges is, is trying to make these rubber bands lay the correct way. We're trying our best, there we go. All right, there's one. Now I'm gonna put one on the other side, nearest to me. So I'll take another set of two rubber bands and throw a half hitch in there. Okay. And then put that one on the other side and try to make them the same length. There it is. Hold it, tie it in. There we go. So there's my back set of legs and I'm gonna cut these off. I'm gonna move my thread forward about an eighth of an inch or so. And then I'm gonna tie in another set of legs. So I'm gonna take another set of two, half hitch them. Put these in. And of course, one on the other side. Spin. You can see me spinning that thread quite a bit. That's a really kind of a cool trick. It's not my trick, but that's the neat thing in fly tying. You learn so many great techniques from uh, other fly tires, and that's one of the wonderful things about it. And then I'm going to add one, less, one last set right about there. The front legs. These will be a little shorter. One thing, if you don't get your rubber band exactly where you want it, this one is rolled to the top. You can always, I call it dental flossing. You can kind of floss it around and put it in the, in the correct spot and then add some, some wraps to lock it in. Cut those. Make sure I don't cut my good legs. <laughs> uh, okay, now I'm gonna add some antenna on the front. And for that, it's gonna be a single rubber band. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna fold that rubber band reasonably in half. And I'm gonna tie that little loop on right here. Oops. Kind of 
floss that into place. There we go. And then cut off that little loop right there. All right. Now I'm going to bring my thread just in back of this last set of legs I added on because I'm going to be working the yarn forward up to right here, just behind that set of last legs I tied in. Now this is the tricky part. Right now the fly looks, looks pretty good. Um, when you start to manipulate this yarn through, we're gonna try to keep these legs kind of looking the way that they are. And you have to kind of, as you move this yarn through, you have to kind of move it in between the legs. So you have to move you know, the rubber bands around. And people say, well, Matt, why don't you trim all your rubber band length right now to the length of your desired length for the end of the fly? I don't do that because I leave these rubber bands long so I have something to hold on to as I manipulate this yarn through in between. It just makes it so much easier. All right. And now I'll tie this off right here behind that second or that last set of legs. Okay, clip this off. Now we're going to add some wings. Now, the wings <clears throat> are this just basically a brown hackle. You can also use material like Swiss straw, you can use um, uh, other synthetic materials. Uh, maybe Zelon or Antron, but I'm just going to use whole feathers and I'm going to select a couple feathers that are going to work for the wing of this insect. I want to select a couple that are reasonably skinny. Ooh, there's a good one. I think I got one for sure. Pluck that one off. And I have to find a mate for that one. I want to try to keep them as even as I can. There we go, there's one, yeah, a little thick. There's one right there. A lot of times when you do this, you'll, you'll pluck them off reasonably close to where you find the other one. And so I've got a couple of feathers here that are reasonably close in diameter. I'm gonna cut off the down just to get that out of the way and strip off some of the fibers and, and now I'm going to lay this in and I'm going to tie this down a little counterclockwise spin again. And the feathers, the, the wings should be a little bit longer than the hook, not too much. I'm going to lay this wing in here. that down and then we're going to need one on the other side there it is we'll cut this down off and strip off some of the fibers and we'll mate this to the length of its other one we'll tie this one in like that clip off this stem without clipping off our rubber bands. All right, now we're going to lay this wing case down over the middle, just like that. And we're going to tie it down in that same spot right behind that last set of legs. So there's our wing case. Cut off this. Now, for the, for the head of this insect, a lot of people will use yellow foam again, um, but I'm going to use some yellow dubbing. Um, I've found that the, the yellow foam just puts a bunch of bulk up here at the front, so I'm going to use uh, yellow dubbing. All right, and I'm going to put some dubbing on my string, and I'm going to put a little bit of dubbing because these insects do have a kind of a yellow head, golden color head. Um, Let's put some dubbing on my string here, on my thread here. One trick with dubbing is, is you only want to use little bits at a time. 
and build your thickness as you go. You don't want to put the whole gob of dubbing on here. Just kind of build it up and this will take just a second. And I might have to add more. We'll see what this gets us. Trying to make that as consistent as possible. There it is. All right now I'm just gonna start to wrap, make a yellow head covering up those thread wraps. Maybe a little more. One thing about dubbing is, is or any material, you can always add more. <clears throat> All right. Maybe a couple of wraps in right here, right behind those legs. Cover that up. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna bring the thread all the way up to the eye, lift everything back. Put a few wraps on the eye. And I'm gonna use a half hitch knot just to hold it. And then I'm gonna come in with my, uh, my whip finish tool. I like to throw a half hitch in there just to hold everything together until I get this tool out so nothing falls apart. I'm having a hard time getting underneath those legs. There we go. And that's one reason I use the half hitch first. I'm going to do one more whip finish. There we go. Now, I'm going to trim these rubber bands up a little bit. Right. Front legs need to be pretty short, so I'm going to trim these pretty short like this. Okay. Antennas are, whoop, that one. There we go. Antennas are going to stay, I'm going to make those just a little bit shorter as well. Even them up. There we go. Back, we're just going to trim these a little bit. I'm going to trim this one a little bit. And the same on my side. Trim that one and this one. And, and there's our pattern. One thing that happened here is in the process, this leg kind of twisted forward on me in the process. Ideally, I'd like to have that one facing backward like that, but it happened to roll when I brought the yarn through, but that's still a pretty good representation of this invasive murder hornet. Well, thank you very much. The insect tied in this video is an invasive pest, which means it's an invasive species. Invasive species are those that are introduced to a new area and when they do, they cause harm to things like our forest, agriculture, and to even native plants and animals. The murder hornet was recently found in Washington state. Our biggest concern with this insect is the damage it can cause to honeybees. It can go into a hive and decimate it in just a few hours. If you see an unusual insect or plant damage, you can report it using edmaps.org. Also, remember, don't move firewood. Just buy it where you burn it.